edition, live from London, with Scotland's Jim Hamilton, England's Andy Goode, Ireland and Lions Stephen Ferris, Wales and Lions Jamie Roberts, to you, the fans. Uh, Tyrone, how, how are you feeling? What's it like this week waiting to get the news on selection? Um, yeah, I'm feeling good, thanks. Um, it's nervous, isn't it? Everyone's a little bit on edge. Um, I suppose we're into the the nitty gritty of the tour now, and I think it means a lot to people. So I think everyone's just kind of waiting to see how it pans out, or you know, if you're in or out. And is that is that tangible around the camp? That that nervousness. Um. Yeah, you can feel it a small bit. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely from this morning, just a small bit of mood. There is that bit of nervousness there. Yeah. And how are you feeling about your chances and how you've performed so far? Um, you don't know really. Um, you don't know what the coaches are thinking. I think, you know, the rest of the tie heads have played very, very well, and um, you know, it's up in the air. See how we go. Do you feel you've you've put your best foot forward though in the opportunities you you've had? Uh, yes and no. I think as a, a player, you're always not you're searching for perfection, but you think you always want a little bit more out of your game and. Yeah, I think um, you know there's a small bit more in games I could have done, or a few little mistakes that I did do, and um, but that's part of playing rugby, isn't it? So um, as I said, we'll just see how it goes. And you started all three games with Rory Sutherland. Is there a, a partnership forming there? What uh, does he bring, and, and how do you find scrummaging and working alongside him? Yeah, look, and especially for a front row, it's timeless. It's t- time to saddle with each other really so I like to think I have a good understanding with Rory we've played with the the three hookers as well so in the short weeks like that sometimes it can be a little bit hard to, to get everyone up on the same page um, but yeah I've definitely feel comfortable scrummaging with Rory yeah and against the spring box it's always a physical battle it's always they always try and pose themselves up front we know that do you feel you've got the, the credentials the qualities to, to match that well, it's a huge challenge for us, isn't it? And um, you know, it's so ingrained in their DNA that kind of scrum dominance, the mall dominance, and you know, it's a huge, huge uh, challenge for you know whatever forward pack and whatever subs are uh, selected. So um, you know, it's it's one of the great things about playing Test series in in South Africa. That and um, I think the lads will be hugely up for it. Are you up for it? Are you excited by the by the prospect if it happens? Yeah, of course, of course. Who wouldn't? Um, be absolutely yeah. And can I just ask you about Alan Wynne Jones? What's he brought since he came into the camp, both on and off the field? That just presence, isn't it? He hasn't spoken a massive amount, but I suppose look, he has so many games of rugby. You know, he's over 150 Test caps. Um, you know, he's been around the game a long time. He's just fourth Lions tour, so. You know, he knows what it's about and his presence around the place is a huge lift and um you know, it's some story to be fair to him, um, to do what he's after doing, so uh fair dinkum to him. And when you've done what he's done and played as much test rugby as he has and Lions tours, does it matter that he's light on game time at, at, at test level? Does that matter? You know, everyone's different, um in terms of that, isn't it? So I suppose he knows himself and his body better than anyone, but you know, he knows how to play rugby, doesn't he? He knows the mental side of the game and I'm sure um, he'll be ripping and raring to go as well. And Captain C on, on the first test, how important is that going to be, that, that role? Look, I suppose it's important in any team, isn't it? Um, you know, how you, I suppose, uh, communicate with refs and, and guide people around the thing. But, you know, I think there's a lot of strong leaders within the group coming from... You know, not only club captains or club leadership groups, but international captains and international leadership groups as well. So, um, you know, so much experience out there. 
And just finally from me, do you know when you'll find out about the, the team? Have they given you any idea when and how you'll find out? No, I presume it'll be in the team meeting. Um, when, we're not too sure. We're trained this afternoon. If it's before then, we don't know. If not, probably, you know, we'll probably find out before tomorrow, I would guess. Good luck, thank you. No problem. Talk sports. Uh, uh, lots of talk about some of the games on tour so far have been relatively straightforward for the Lions, but I've never yet heard of a team from South Africa that doesn't fancy themselves in the scrum. What's it been like for the front row guys? I guess it's pretty much that, isn't it? You know, you're coming against a passionate crew that's, um, you know, take pride in their work and their art at scrum time. And, you know, yes, we're not playing the Springboks, yes, we're playing the the provincial teams are, you know, the franchise is there, but, you know, they still, still take massive pride in their scrum and they're still big men. Um, so, you know, it's been tough. It's been a good workout for us. It's been a good challenge. And, you know, as I said, it's trying to get, um, you know, on the same page very, very quickly um, and getting the feel of the scrum right really would be a big thing for me because, um, you know, it does take time to create a bit of partnership. On that, front row's actually got a, a decent amount of continuity from the 2017 tour uh, compared to some other parts of the squad. Does it actually feel like you guys started from maybe a few squares up the board compared to some of the other positions? Yeah, look, maybe from the small chats point of view, isn't it? You kind of know how they work or, you know, how to view the scrum. And a lot changes in four years, doesn't it? So, um but I'd say from the personal point of view of being able to chat to a person or know them at a deeper level than just talking straight business on day one, it makes it a little bit easier. How good are the Springboks up front? Seeing quotes from their former prop, Robbie Kempson, over the weekend saying he's a bit concerned about their lack of depth. Yeah, you look at the squad they have. I know they had a few issues with COVID or you know self-isolation there, but you have the, you know, the bones of a... You know, a World Cup win in front row, and we all know what they did at the World Cup there. And you know, they've some players that you know haven't played against us in the in the A games, and that'll be coming back in. And you know, they're very very dangerous operators. Three of your first eight international appearances were against South Africa, but the last time you played the Springboks was November of 2017. Does that present any issues for you? Um, that's good homework. Um, Ash, look, at the end of the day, it's no different, really, what you do week in, week out. If you're playing New Zealand, Australia, that's just to run the, the way the dice rolls. And um, Look, the lads have played against some of the props already with the A team. We've played against their, their club team. So, you know, there's a bit of a trend or uh, developing there. And obviously, the vi video work that you do can put you in a good stead going into a game. Nick Berry is the referee on, on Saturday. Uh, Aussies and Kiwis tend to view the scrum more as more as a restart. Does that change things? Does that change any of the approach for the weekend? Uh, look, there's been, there's been stuff coming out from you know World Rugby on you know the scrum and the way they want this, um, our teams to to scrummage. So, you know, we try to do that as best we can. Outside that. Um, you know, we have an opportunity to chat to the, the referee before the game and and you know, to see or try to align what we're trying to do, what hopefully he sees at the, at the weekend or in the game. So, um, as always, I think you, you have to look at yourself first before um, trying to manage referees. Thank you. Hey, how are you? It's Michael Harkin here. I'm just wondering when the team, uh, the tw or when the 23 is selected, I assume there'll be a little bit of this sort of tension gone out of the press. How important is it that you try and stay as relaxed and focused as you can and not play the match too early in your head or let your match or your, your mind kind of drift ahead towards uh, the weekend. It's massive, isn't it? And, you know, it'll be good to get it out there whenever it is named and let lads deal with it the way, you know, they deal with it. As I said, there are a lot of experienced players in the group here and, you know, it's a test match. It's We're back to, a, you know, a full week's prep, which feels a lot more normal to all the players here and... Um, and then we can just get, get on with our work, really. And when it's time to switch off and enjoy each other's company, we can do that too. Uh, given the fact that you described it as a test match, you're against the world champions, you're against a, you know, a world-class front row, 
and reserves on the bench as well. I mean, is this the kind of ultimate test from a rugby playing point of view? Yeah, it's big by rugby, isn't it? It's top end rugby, and you know, as a front five, it's a, a very good barometer where we're at. And just from your own point of view, not alone can you prop, but you can now run pretty fast and pass as well. Is that other parts of your game that you've been working on for the last while? Um, yeah, I, I remember during lockdown there, there was a lot of Lions game on, there was a lot of Lions at 2017 tour on, and you kind of look back and you think of, you know, I'm, I'm not doing a whole lot in the game, you're working hard, yes, you're kick chasing, you're working hard on the inside and defence, but there's not a whole lot much more going on other than the set piece and, and trying to hit rucks hard and I'd like to think that you know I've added a bit more to my game there and I'm certainly not there with or at the where it can be with some of the aspects of my game but I think that's part of road player isn't it you're always trying to to push it on or, or drive on and get that a little bit better cool thanks man Hi, Tyg. Uh, Sinead here uh, in Virgin Media. How are you? Um, Corky asked you there about, you know, is this the ultimate test? You know, um, we know how dominant they are and how strong they are in the mall and the scrum. But do these kind of games, do you feel, even as unique as they are, bring out the best in you as well? Um, yeah, like Sinead says, like, it's big by rugby and, um, you know, it's at a big stage and you can feel that around the place. You know, you can feel that it's a big week and it has a lot of importance on it and, you know, I think as rugby players, people generally rise to those occasions, um, and just that internal want to win and do well. You know. Can I just ask you about Conor Murray as well? Obviously, as a you know Ireland teammate, how has he found the last few days? You know, um, the captaincy going back to Alan Wynne Jones after him getting it. What what's he been like? Actually, a lot of people know him, and he's he's very laid back, isn't he? He's near horizontal at times and off the pitch so um you know it's water on the ducks back to him um he was delighted he was about limerick won yesterday won the monster uh hurling championship again and uh he was in cloud nine there and just finally from for me um you mentioned there means different things to different people playing in these kind of tests like what does it mean to you what would it mean to you to play on saturday i sure means it means so much you know um not to get personal about it but i've been through you know, a rough enough year with injury and stuff like that and I suppose there's always a light at the end of the tunnel where, you know, why are you doing it? You're doing it to try to go on a Lions tour, aren't you? And, um, you know, to try to, to do something special as a group of, as a, a group of players and, you know, that means a lot. Good luck. Thanks, Tyke. Hey, Tyke, how's it going? Uh, what's the crack with you being a DJ now? Uh, it's over-egged, um, to be honest with you, really. Um, Long and short of it, his Tom Curry found Dex. You know, they brought a lot of stuff over here for us, um, just to keep us entertained. Obviously, with the hotel and stuff like that. So, Tom Curry found Dex and decided he wanted to be a DJ. And I was like, "Look, let's let's have a go or a bit of crack, try to learn a new skill or what have you." And it went terribly. Um, and then we found out Josh Navidi or Navici, as we're calling him. He actually is a DJ. He actually does a bit of DJ in a club. So we tried to learn a little bit off him. We've done a coffee morning, heavily helped by Navici. And uh, that's about it. We're terrible. I wouldn't be trying to sell any tickets or at night time soon. Go well this week. Hey, Ty, how you doing? You well, Jerry here. I can hear you loud and clear, Jerry. Good stuff. Um, you made your first test start against the box five summers ago. Um, um, I've been a replacement in Cape Town. You started in Joburg. Have you changed much as a player and a person since then? Do you think? And if so, in what ways? Yeah, I probably come back to what you said. I said earlier as well, just about you know you're always at trying to add strings to your bow. Um, at that point, you're probably. Uh, a deer in the headlights a small bit with terms of test rugby and what it meant it was probably uh, fairly green um, you know and from a personal point of view as well you know what was I was I 23 or 4 around that point or 22 or 23 I suppose look you obviously mature a lot as well as a, as a person and uh, since then so I like to think I've developed a good bit since then Thanks Ty Ty Stephen Jones here um 
There are three very, very fine hookers on, on this tour. I just wondered, uh, as far as you're concerned, how difficult, how different are they? And do you have to change your style up front, depending on which of the three is playing with you? Uh, not so much style, but just from a technical perspective, a small bit, of course, because... You know, it's even where your 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 left hand or your binding hand on the hooker goes. Um, just trying to get your shoulder position right through the left hand side there. So there is a little bit of tweaking. Obviously, it's a it's a very technical position, the front row, and as I said, trying to get the feel right with all of them, or where they bind on you, or what way we're trying to align, etc., etc. Um, so it does take a you know it takes a bit of conversation. It takes a few setups. In the team room, it just takes a bit of feel now. Thank you, thank you. I'm tying as well. Yeah. Um, four years ago, what were your emotions like in the similar week with the tests looming? And does that can you kind of tap into that, knowing what you went through and working out who was going to get selected and stuff for that, and you were successful that time? Is that going to help you this time? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Um, you know, it's hard to put yourself back in those positions again and I suppose it equally means as much to you now as uh, it did then and um, you know tapping into motions hopefully it's a short wait to find out but you know time will tell Do you remember how you felt that week? Um, to be honest with you I can't um, I just remember being very nervous um, you know obviously to hear the team in the second um, after we lost the first test I remember being very nervous in the the team meeting where you named team, obviously because you could kind of feel a few changes were coming and we slipped up on two or three or two scrum penalties, I think, in that game. So you never know. Thanks okay, good luck. Thanks, Ty. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. Cheers, Ty. All right, boys. Thanks, sir.